indicates the first thing if you are talking about india then we call it as democratic form of government now when when do we say that it is democratic form of government when people choose government another option of understanding how government is formed is by way of dissent which is termed as or inheritance which is termed as monarchical form of government monarchical form of government okay now the first thing that polity indicates is what is source of government whether the source of government is people then we call it as democracy if the source of government is by way of inheritance then we call it as monarchy so basically polity word will tell us who is the source of government in a country this is the first thing now the second thing that it will tell us is we usually use this word federal unitary what do you mean by federal what is the meaning of the word unitary when you look at any country if you find two governments two governments indicate decentralized rule if you find a decentralized government we call it as federal if we find one government we call it as unitary which is centralized form of government then we call it as unitary so basically the word polity will also tell us whether government or governance a country is centralized or decentralized decentralized it is federal centralized it is unitary the third aspect is it will tell us with what will be the relationship between two important organs of government called as executive and legislature depending on the relationship between executive and legislature it will tell us whether it is parliamentary form of government or what will be the opposite to parliamentary form presidential form of government now what is the difference between parliamentary and presidential these two terms i'm again going to discuss come forward ma come forward and sit these two terms i'm again going to discuss when i come to salient features but for you to understand we say parliamentary form of government india has parliamentary form of government now tell me we have both the president as well as prime minister do we elect them directly how is the president elected president is elected indirectly how is the prime minister chosen who becomes the prime minister of the country do we choose the prime minister directly was it uh, rahul gandhi versus narendra modi in 2014 elections per se voting no then how how did uh, narendra modi become the prime minister and why not rahul gandhi mp seats in lok sabha whichever party gets the majority it lead its leader becomes the prime minister so basically we first choose the members of lok sabha am i correct these people are directly elected okay lok sabha is a part of legislature because it is one of the houses of parliament we elect the members of lok sabha in the, within the lok sabha whichever group of people has the highest majority the leader of that group becomes the prime minister correct so in this way can i say that this is legislature within legislature a small group of people will become executive am i right so can i say that executive is a part of legislature in parliamentary form 
correct wrong executive is a part of legislature in parliamentary form because people are only choosing the legislature people are not choosing the executive directly from within the legislature whichever group has majority goes on to become the executive but in presidential form what happens is legislature is directly elected by the people executive is also directly elected by the people and clearly there is a separation legislature is different executive is different usa is the best example of presidential form you will not have any person of legislature in executive you will not have any person of executive in legislature but in india executive prime minister is part of the executive but he will also be a member of the legislature because executive is a subset of legislature here executive is different legislature is different now this kind of relationship if it is subset then we call it as parliamentary form if it is independent then we call it as <coughs> presidential form so basically when you use the word polity or form of government it tells us three things it will tell us who who is the source of government it will tell us whether the governance in the country is centralized or decentralized when you look at india what do you find we find federal form of government in india because we have two governments one at the center the other is the state but when you look at a country like britain what do you find you find unitary form you have one government in the center governing the entire country so it will tell us whether governance is centralized or decentralized and then polity will also tell us what will be the relationship between executive and legislature will it be that of interdependence here it is interdependent will it be that of independent if it is independent presidential if it is interdependent then it is parliamentary form make a note of this first so if anybody asks you what is the definition of polity then your answer should be form of government but if you have to elaborate it it tells us the source of government rule whether it is centralized or decentralized and then relationship between the organs of government make a note of it please to you.
copy this. Finished? Yes. Now, let us look at what do you mean by constitution. Now, follow this very carefully. Think and answer to what I am asking you. Imagine this part is blank. We will divide it into two parts. For you to understand the importance of constitution, okay? I divide this into two parts. Now, this full part, you take it as one page which is absolutely blank. The other page, I draw a small box. Okay? Now, I say that when you do not have constitution, garment function will be like a plain page. But when you have a constitution, it is as good as box within that plain page. What do I mean by this? Imagine we are being ruled by a king and suddenly king in the night has a dream that if anybody in his kingdom wears a white colored dress, he will die. What will be the next thing that the king will do in the morning? He will ban white totally in the kingdom, right? That is the first, okay? The second is Narendra Modi gets the same dream. What can he do? You know, perhaps do three homeworms and all that stuff. Go to through two or three temples and try to find out from astrologers what precautions he has to take. But can he do the same thing of banning white in India? Why not? That is the second example. Now tell me, the difference is because of the constitution. Did you understand? First example I gave you of the king and I am relating it to the first part of your page. The second example that I gave you is of our Prime Minister getting the same dream. I am relating it to the second, the next part of the uh, board. So what is the difference that the constitution is bringing? Uh, he is not able to do it only because there is a constitution. The king could do it only because there was no constitution. Now tell me what is the difference? So, so yeah, so what, what is the difference? According to the constitution is doing what? It, I, can I say it is unlimited and limited? When you look at this, this is unlimited here. Yeah? You can start anywhere and you can end anywhere. But uh, when you look at this, this is limited because this is drawing a limit on your powers. Whatever you want to do, you please do it within your box. You are not supposed to get out of the box. But here you do not have any box which means without no constitution simply means no limit on the power of garment. Constitution will bring that limit which is required on the power of garment. Now, why is it important to limit the power of garment? The basic reason why you need a constitution is because you need to limit the power of garment. Why? Why should you limit the power of garment? What happens if power is not controlled? There will be more misuse. In the process, who suffers? 
it is the people now you take the mogul rulers all six great moguls belong to the same family but the most popular and the least popular you have the same from the same family why because there was no written code of conduct for the ruler so according to his understanding his knowledge and his aspiration he ruled the country if you are a good person you are a good ruler if you are a bad person you automatically become a bad ruler so you know when you have constitution it gives you the basic framework according to which you have to govern the country you cannot go beyond this framework so how do i define the constitution i will define the constitution as fundamental or basic law of the land now why am i saying that it is fundamental or basic law of the land because it does certain basic things on on the basis of which on the foundation of which your entire country will run what are those basic things first it will tell us that there will be certain minimum rules in the country which should be followed by everybody why because you have to keep the country united for example whenever i as a citizen of india have any kind of violation of my fundamental rights will have the right to speak about such violation am i correct however i will lose the right the minute i abuse another citizen so what i'm saying i am constitution is saying that a you have certain the reason why these rights are given to these rights will limit the government but at the same time a you use your rights only to yourself the minute you a start violating the rights of others then your rights will not be there simple why you should not violate because b has his right to dignity when a is abusing b is he not violating b's right of dignity yes so it is basically telling us that there will be certain rules which have to be followed every by everybody in the society by both citizens as well as government government is also told this is your limit once you cross your limit there will be a check on your power citizens are also told citizens you have these rights however you overstep these rights they will be controlled so it is laying down certain minimum rules that are required to keep the country together the next it does is it tells us how the government will come to power or from where will the government be source who will be the source of government see we call india as a democratic country because our constitution gives the right to vote to all citizens above 18 years by giving the right to vote what is the constitution saying it is saying that the source of government in india will be the people so first it is telling us rules for basic coordination in society then it is telling us how government of a country will be formed after it tells us how government of a country is formed it should immediately tell us what will be the functions of government and when it talks about functions of government if you remember yesterday i told you there will be three basic functions of a leader what are the three basic functions yes three core functions of a leader yesterday's class i told you why you need a head of the family then i told you what three things basic things he does he has to first enact laws then execute laws and finally resolve disputes we call it as adjudication okay these are the three basic functions constitution says should be by the government now the next question is should i give all these three basic functions to one person or should i divide why divide and why not one authority 
why shouldn't one authority do all the three basic functions? Why should we divide? Yes? If you everything to one person, inevitably there will be misuse of power, isn't it? That is the reason why it is divided. Now, how is it divided? I am writing it here. It is divided in the form of three organs of government called this will be done by legislature. This second function is performed by executive and the third function is performed by the now executive in India sorry legislature in India will be parliament at the center and what will be there in the state state legislature in the states executive at the center will be PM and council headed by President, state, CM and council headed by governor, okay. And tomorrow if you get into service, all public servants will be a part of the executive, okay. Judiciary in India constitution is, will be Supreme Court followed by High Court followed by subordinate court. So, what is the constitution doing? It is telling us the source of government, it tells us the functions of government and it divides the functions of government into three basic organs called legislature, executive and judiciary. Okay, the next thing it tells us is, see you told us, constitution has told us that there will be three organs of government but I have a basic doubt. My doubt is out of these three organs of government, executive, legislature, judiciary, will they, which one will be more powerful? Okay, whom are you giving more power or control over the others? If you take USA, the constitution of USA is written in such a way that judiciary is given more power than legislature. Out of the three organs, US constitution has given maximum powers to judiciary. You take the constitution of Britain, maximum powers in Britain is given to the legislature over judiciary to the extent that judiciary, the judgments given by judiciary can be nullified or overrided by the legislature. But when it comes to India, India has struck a very good balance between the three organs of government. Constitution of India says none of them are powerful. We divide powers equally amongst the three organs. Okay, So, the constitution will also tell us on this basis the relationship between the three organs of government between executive, legislature and judiciary. It should clearly mention who is more powerful or whether powers are equally balanced. Okay. Now, apart from this, constitution also does something for our welfare. If I tell you that citizens of India have certain expectations and aspirations in terms of development. Now, if I ask all of you, what do you want the government to do for you all? What will be your answer? Big, uh, give a big jumbo notification so that everybody gets a government job, isn't it? So, for your age, you will say that employment is your priority. I have 11 year old kid. If you ask me what is your priority, what will be my answer? I will say I need a very good education system for my kid. Go and ask the same question to a 60 year old man or woman. The pension is one and what else? Health. They will need good health care facilities. So, can I say that in our society, each group of people have their own set of aspirations. Is the government doing anything about all these things in terms of health, education and employment? Yes, no? See, we have to talk on the paper. The government is doing so. What is the government doing? For, this, for the health, what, which is the most important scheme la launched by United AP? Arogya Sri modeled what else for education? Primary education. Sarva Siksha Abhyan. 
why do you think the government is doing all this here why should the government even work for our development you know ultimately by implementing all these schemes the government is helping us achieve our aspirations why is the government doing it because it has lot of money because it has to come back to power which is true but why is it doing because our constitution says please work for the overall development of people you have to work for their progress and indian constitution gives this directive work for the development of people through what is called as directive principles of state policy constitution not just lays foundation for government it also contributes to the development of people because of these five points we say that constitution is the fundamental law of the land okay now write down put the next side heading as constitution and take down write down constitution is defined as constitution is defined as the fundamental constitution is defined as the fundamental or basic law of the land fundamental or basic law of the land on the basis of which on the basis of which the government in a country is formed on the basis of which the government in a country is formed government of a country is formed and the country is governed and the country is governed so you form the government you govern the government on the basis of what is written in your constitution full stop and continue it is considered fundamental because it is considered fundamental because it lays down certain rules and regulations it lays down certain rules and regulations for minimal coordination lays down certain rules and regulations for minimal coordination in the society minimal coordination in the society okay take down the next point constitution of a country serves the following purposes constitution of a country serves the following purposes and these purposes and these purposes also explain these purposes also explain the significance of the constitution also explain the significance of the constitution significance of the constitution okay from here on we are writing in points take down the first point the constitution the constitution first point the constitution indicates the source of government indicates the source of government in a country indicates the source of government in a country indicates the source of government in a country okay below the same point i'm talking in context with indian constitution so write down in the same point below the indian constitution the indian constitution by providing universal adult franchise by providing universal adult franchise 
providing universal adult franchise clearly indicates clearly indicates that the source of government in india source of government in india source of government in india is the people of india is the people of india thereby providing for thereby providing for a democratic form of government thereby providing for a democratic form of government take down the second point constitution defines the powers and functions of constitution defines the powers and fun functions of government defines the powers and functions of government okay take down the three basic functions of government anywhere in the world the three basic functions of government anywhere in the world basic functions of government anywhere in the world basic functions of government anywhere in the world are what are the three basic functions tell me you have to make laws ensure that everybody follows them and whenever there is a dispute you resolve it so write down first one enacting laws second executing laws and third would be adjudication third adjudication adjudication in brackets write down resolving disputes adjudication is a formal term that we use for resolving disputes resolving disputes so whenever i ask you what are the three basic functions of government these will be the three basic functions okay now please make a note of this you know write it as a continuation the same flow chart these are the three core functions of government three organs of government and what is there in india please make a note from here till there At every level, write what is it. When you are writing legislature, executive, judiciary, beside you, please write three organs of government. They are called as the three limbs of government.
finished writing now take down the next point the constitution the constitution also clarifies on the relationship the constitution also clarifies on the relationship between the three organs on the relationship between the three organs of government between the three organs of government and now you please make a note of this what is it in usa britain and how is it in india write it down take down the next point write down the constitution limits the power of government the constitution limits the power of government by guaranteeing certain fun, certain rights by guaranteeing certain rights and safeguards to the citizens of the country certain rights and safeguards to the citizens of the country this is a very important point they if at all they ask a question how is the power of government limited by the constitution your answer should be by granting certain rights now how for example in india we have certain fundamental rights in our constitution one such fundamental right says no discrimination in public employment now what do you mean by public employment it is a government job any employment under the government is considered as a public employment who has the power to make recruitment the recruitment is made by public service commission however public service commission will only recruit when government tells them what they need so indirectly the government is providing for recruitment to public employment now the government can appoint people okay it is a function of the government to appoint people in government jobs however this function is has a limitation the limitation is boss you appoint but you should not show any favoritism or bias now by telling no discrimination is the constitution not drawing a limit on the power of government of appointing people by telling them you appoint you can appoint anybody but there should not be any favoritism in other words it is very clearly telling the government appointment should be only on the basis of merit no bias no favoritism when you are appointing a person to government jobs so you have the power of appointment as long as you do not show any discrimination so rights basically tell the government boss this is a right given to citizen you cannot violate so they tell the government what it should not do should not do because they clearly specify if you do this you are violating the fundamental right so the best way of limiting the power of government is guaranteeing by granting certain rights to citizens are we clear with this point yes take down the next one the constitution the constitution can also direct the constitution can also direct constitution can also direct the government to work for the welfare of direct the government to work for the welfare of the citizens 
work for the welfare of citizens. Write down below the same point, the constitution of India, the constitution of India through directive principles of state policy, the constitution of India through directive principles of state policy, DPSP in short, directive principles of state policy, instruct the government, instruct the government to work towards, to work towards the overall development, to work towards the overall development of the people overall development of the people of the country of the people of the country okay now the next side heading relationship between polity and constitution relationship between polity and constitution now tell me how do we look at the relationship between polity and constitution now you, I have told you what is polity, I have told you what is constitution. You please tell me what will be the link between polity, constitution. How are both of them connected? They are connected? How are they connected? Yes? How are they connected? Okay, what, which one will form a base for which one? So, can I say that constitution is the foundation. On this, you build the polity of a country. So, in other words, polity will be based on what? Based on constitution. Now, if I want to make any change in polity, I have to change the constitution because this forms the basis for the polity of a country. So, if tomorrow India has parliamentary form. If we want to change to presidential form, can we directly make a change in polity? No, we have to make a change in the constitution. Just make, write this down and I will give you the point. write down the polity of any country the polity of any country the polity of any country will be based the polity of any country will be based polity of any country will be based on its constitution on its constitution. In other words, the constitution of a country provides the framework, the constitution of a country provides the frame, framework, provides the framework according to which, according to which the polity of any country is designed according to which the polity of any country is designed. The polity of any country is designed and therefore any change, any change in the polity of a country any change in the polity of the country can be brought about can be brought about by changing the constitution of the country by changing the constitution of the country ok 
okay now take down classification of constitutions classification of constitutions now on what basis do we classify or categorize constitutions and what are the different types of constitutions first listen please then you can make a note now types of constitutions are categorized on two bases the first basis for categorization is the physical form of the constitution physical form i mean whether it is written or unwritten okay so this is the basis this is the types on within the base okay the other base will be the amendment an amendment based you can categorize it into rigid or in elastic flexible or elastic constitution make a note of this first then we'll go into the details okay now let's look at this part first when i talk about physical form i mean can i find the constitution as one document or book if i find the entire constitution of country as one document or a book i call it as a written constitution so how do we define a written constitution a constitution which is available in one single document we call it as a written constitution so it is as good as a book okay now when i say a book the first thing that i would require for a book is a do i need an author for a book now author of a written constitution anywhere in the world is called as a constituent assembly now when i'm saying assembly it automatically means group of people so wherever you talk, you hear about a constitution being written it will always be written by a constituent assembly which is a group of people who could be elected or nominated or both okay so the first characteristic of a written constitution will be a constituent assembly now the second characteristic is i said assembly a group of people when a group of people are doing something they have to do it in agreement right now for example you propose within the group you propose something but at the end of it in order to ensure when i am making this proposal i want everybody to agree to this proposal but there will be somebody else who has a different proposal which goes against my proposal you know when two different proposals are made automatically it leads to a lot of arguments discussions am i correct and finally you have to arrive at a conclusion often what is originally proposed is subjected to change 
am i correct in the argument what is originally proposed there will be certain change in the original proposal how do you arrive at a conclusion then you discuss 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 but you have to end it somewhere how will you end it this group has to make a decision okay we are i am proposing something some of you are not agreeing we are discussing but finally we have to come to a conclusion what do we do we have to vote because we have to get the majority conclusion is always based on majority so there are two things one is what is originally proposed undergoes a change and because original proposal is undergoing a change we also call a written constitution as a codified constitution computer code i'm sure some of you at least would know is a set of pro instructions in the form of a program now when you write a computer code in the first time itself will you will it be right or will you have to change it again and un again until you get the desired output you change it similarly you make basic proposal that proposal will undergo changes until people agree and because we are making these changes we call it as a codified constitution and we said that conclusion is drawn through voting voting is formally known as enacting whenever you use the word enacting we understand that people are making a decision through voting since it is decided through voting we also call it as an enacted constitution okay so the other features of a written constitution is original will always undergo change and decisions are always made through voting okay now whenever you say it is a book a book will have two things that is a date of you cannot release a book without completing it after completing it you will have a date of publication and a date of release what is the difference what is date of publication what is release so yeah basically release means it is available in the market to be used okay publication is where it is ready printed waiting to go to the market okay similarly constitution will have a date of enactment meaning passed approved and ready date of commencement meaning the day when it actually comes into force its provisions must be followed in some cases both these dates will be the same but in india's case this date is 26th november 1949 and this date is our republic day 26th jan 1950 so the other feature of a written constitution will be it has to have a date of enactment it has to have a date of commencement so we the features of written constitution one it should always be authored by a constituent assembly whatever is originally proposed will undergo changes and conclusions or decisions will always be made through voting majority and the third is you should always have a date of enactment and date of commencement these will be the features of a written constitution examples india USA make a note of written constitution now written constitution is defined as a single formal document written constitution is defined as a single formal document and now write down features of a written constitution take down the three when you are writing argument discussion original undergoes change please write their codified constitution when you are writing conclusion through voting write their enacted constitution
finished. Now let's look at unwritten constitution. Unwritten constitution will be exactly opposite to a written constitution. So what do you mean by an unwritten constitution? It simply means that you don't find the entire constitution in one book, not a single document. Then how do you understand an unwritten constitution? If you want to understand an unwritten constitution, you have to look at a number of other things like acts of parliament, orders of government, customs, traditions followed in that country. You have to look at all these and from these you have to derive the constitution. Since you are going to derive the constitution from all these, we call it as a cumulative constitution. What do you mean by a cumulative constitution? What is cumulative frequency? Yes, what is cumulative frequency? where you add up everything and take the average. What are you doing here? You are reading everything and identifying certain points and then telling that this is the constitution. So you are practically deriving certain points from all this and claiming it to be the constitution. Therefore, you call it as a cumulative constitution. Now tell me, will all these things have the same date of origin? They will have different dates of origin. As these originate, the constitution will also evolve. Each of these will have different dates of origin and each of these as they start, the cons there will be new things that will be added to the constitution. Since it is a continuous process, we call an unwritten constitution as a evolved constitution because it keeps on evolving along with new laws, new orders, new traditions. Okay, So an unwritten constitution will be called as a cumulative constitution, an evolved constitution and you have to remember it is not a single document. The features will be different sources, different dates of origin. Okay, Now, of parliament, I will explain shortly. Just make a note of this for unwritten constitution. Example of an unwritten constitution is Acts of Parliament, Orders of Government. I am talking about the orders given by King in Britain. Very important is the Magna Carta issued by the Crown, British Crown. There are many customs and traditions which are followed in UK, which are considered to be a part of the constitution. Okay? Make a note of this now, written, unwritten constitution.
Now, before I proceed with the amendment procedure, I want you all to tell me the difference. I am sure you all have heard about these two things in our country. We have, all of us know that India has a constitution. India also has laws like National Food Security Act. Okay, you have all these acts. You also have a constitution. What are these? Is there any relationship between the two? Are these included in the constitution? All these are called as statutes. Okay, then what is the difference between a statute and constitution? Will there be any difference or will statutes become a part of the constitution? Did you hear all these? Did you hear the word statute? All these are called statutes. Okay. Statute is defined as an ordinary law. Okay. Ordinary law is different from constitutional law. What do you mean by constitutional law? Enforcement or implementation of constitution is considered as constitutional law. Okay. Constitutional law and ordinary law differ. Now, on what basis do they differ? Constitution always requires a special majority in India, whereas ordinary law requires a simple majority. Then the question is, what is the simple majority and what is special majority? For you to understand this, tell me one thing. If we take 100 what is that one number which will divide it into a minority majority? 100 is the number. If I have to divide it into majority and minority, the number will be 51. So, 51 is the minimum majority. Can I call it as the minimum majority in 100? Otherwise, anything above 51. 75 is also a majority. 80 is also a majority. 66 is also a majority. But the minimum majority will be 51. This minimum majority in constitution or in polity is what we call as or the smallest, lowest majority required. The smallest majority required is called as simple majority. Now, what happens is depending on the provisions of the constitution or depending on what a decision must be made we use different types of majorities. Out of these different types, the lowest majority is called as simple majority. Otherwise, you also have what is called as effective majority. Today, we have the election results coming out. How do you know which, which party is going to form the government? On what basis do we know that which party is going to form the government? They have to get a majority. What is that majority? UPA, UP has 403 state assembly seats, legislative assembly seats. Now tell me how many seats should one party get in order to form the government? Two not? Two. So what are we doing here? We are dividing the entire strength by 2 plus 1, isn't it? This is called as absolute majority. The term that we use for this, where you consider the total strength, half of the total strength as majority is called as absolute majority. So, there will be different types of majorities that we use in our constitution. These types of majorities I will explain when I come to constitutional amendment procedure. But for now, I want you all to understand what do you mean by a simple majority. Now, for you to understand simple majority, let us take Lok Sabha has 545 strength, total strength out of which on a given day, on an exit day, 520 people are present out of which we have voting on that day, only 500 people participate in voting. Now, this 500 people, I call them as present and voting. Okay? In this 500, 300 people have said yes to the proposal, 
200 people have said no. The proposal needs to be approved by a simple majority. Then how do I calculate simple majority? I will take present and voting which is 500. Simple majority is nothing but a majority of present and voting which is nothing but 500 divided by 2 plus 1. How much should be the simple majority? 251. How many people have said yes? 300. So is my proposal approved? It is approved. How is this different from absolute majority? 545 is the total strength of Lok Sabha. If you want to form government divided by 2 plus 1 which is 273. Tell me is simple majority in this case less than 273? Yes, this is the lowest majority that we use in India and whatever decision is made by this majority is called as an ordinary law. Okay, so the difference between constitutional law and ordinary law is in terms of how many people should approve a decision. If it is approved by a majority greater than simple majority, we include it in the constitution. If it is approved by simple majority, we publish it separately and we call it as a statute. Okay, out of these two, which one will be more powerful, constitution or statute? Constitution is more powerful because you need more number of people to agree to it. This you will need comparatively less number of people. Now why are we discussing this? Because any constitution that can be amended by the same simple majority, it is called as flexible meaning easy to amend. Any constitution that requires a majority greater than simple majority, then you call it as a rigid constitution. Now this greater than can be 66%, 75%, 80% and so on. How much is it will be decided by that country. But you need majority greater than simple majority. First make a note of this example for simple majority. Then I will give you the points for flexible and rigid. We use four types of majority in India and most frequently used is simple majority. From here on, whenever I say statute, you should understand that it is an ordinary law. An ordinary law is any law which is made by a simple majority. Now let's look at amendment procedure. The first question is, why should you amend the constitution? When do we use the word amend? Amend indicates making a 
change the technical term used to making a change to the constitution is amending the constitution the first question is why should the constitution be changed why should you even make a change in the constitution what is the need okay now in 1950 when our constitution commenced i'll give you a small example you ask any parent then in 1950 what he wanted his child to become later in life 90% of them wanted him to continue his parent the parents occupation am i correct they wanted him to continue in the family occupation so in 1950 the priority was given to family occupation okay now you come slowly towards 1980s gradually this priority of family occupation underwent a change the change was every parent irrespective whether of whether he was a rickshaw pull farmer or an officer started giving priority to education based employment can i say that there has been a paradigm shift here from family traditional occupation to education based employment now when there is a change in what is anticipated by a parent don't you think that this change should reflect in the constitution and this change is reflected in our constitution by right to education as a fundamental right added by the 86th constitutional amendment act which year 2002 okay so the reason why you have to make a change is when there will see society societal needs will always keep changing as the needs of people change constitution should also change because it has to adapt to the changing needs of people it has to address the changing needs of people and therefore it has to change and when constitution allows a change we refer to it as a document why because it is allowing a change to happen to itself whenever it allows a change we call it as a living document can we call the indian constitution as a living document yes because it allows changes to be done please make a note of this first as i said a rigid constitution is one which requires a greater majority than simple majority if you can change it with a greater majority than 
simple majority then you say that the constitution is rigid okay and a constitution said to be flexible when you change it with a simple majority simple majority flexibility simple majority uh, rigidity greater than simple majority now in other words, you have constitutional amendment procedure okay ordinary law making procedure both of these require majority when you have the same procedure for ordinary law making and constitutional amendment it becomes flexible in flexible constitutional both constitutional amendment procedure and ordinary law making procedure will be same in a rigid constitution constitutional amendment procedure will be different from ordinary law making procedure why constitutional amendment procedure requires a majority greater than simple majority ordinary law making procedure will all use the same simple majority is this point clear in flexible constitution both these will be the same in rigid constitution both these will be different and usually a rigid constitution will be written in nature in the kante in a written constitution they clearly specify a separate constitutional amendment procedure they'll write down a separate constitutional amendment procedure and the rigidity will always go with written constitution whereas a flexible constitution there will be no separate it will be unwritten because you will not have a separate constitution amendment procedure make a note of this now flexibility and unwritten go together rigidity and written will go together since you are writing the entire constitution you will also write a separate constitutional amendment procedure that please copy this the meaning of this statement you first write it down after you finish copying this please write down the statement now why do we say that no constitution is completely written or completely unwritten because see when i told you about an unwritten constitution i also mentioned acts of 
पार्लियामेंट एक्ट ऑफ पार्लियामेंट इज नथिंग बट स्टैट्यूट मेड बाय एक्ट इज नथिंग बट स्टैट्यूट मेड बाय पार्लियामेंट एंड स्टैट्यूट विल ऑलवेज बी इन अ रिटर्न फॉर्म ओके नाउ कंप्लीटली रिटर्न इन इंडिया देर आर सेवरल कन्वेंशन that are followed which are not mentioned in the constitution for example you take a lok sabha lok sabha has a person called a speaker as its head where is it written that there should be a speaker for lok sabha constitution constitution also tells us that this speaker of lok sabha is elected by whom by members of lok sabha till here it is given in the constitution however in india any time the lok sabha speaker will be from the ruling party but this is not mentioned in the constitution it is a convention a custom that we follow in india always the speaker will be from ruling party but not mentioned in the constitution so you cannot have a completely written 100 percent written constitution or unwritten constitution then how do you categorize you categorize on the basis of what percentage is written or unwritten if majority of it is written then we call it as written constitution if majority of it is unwritten then we call it as unwritten constitution clear with this now write down take down i'll dictate this because continue with because and write down take down in an un in an unwritten constitution write it as points in an unwritten constitution constitution battery bejuma unwritten constitution there will be acts of parliament there will be acts of parliament which are written in nature there will be acts of parliament which are written in nature written in nature okay second a written constitution will include several conventions a written constitution will include several conventions that are not mentioned in the constitution that are not mentioned in the constitution mentioned in the constitution but followed as rules but followed like written rule followed like a written rule now you please make a note of this example convention this is a convention otherwise constitution tells us speaker must be a member of lok sabha elected by members of lok sabha but it does not mention that he should be from a ruling party from the ruling party with this we finish the introductory chapter i have asked the science faculty to come today he'll do a small orientation for you all for about an hour or he'll just give you an overview of what should be read in sciences please read this chapter and come back on monday i'll continue i'll start with the framing of the constitution on monday tomorrow you don't have a class monday the timings will be the same